Welcome to Toy Poloi. No Legos were harmed in the making of this video. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at restoring these two vintage Kenner 12 inch R2D2 figures. Now, both of these have uh, some fairly common issues, and I hope to be able to cover all of those in this video. I think the most common one seems to be that the uh, Death Star plans are missing from the back of these figures. So I definitely have a way of making replacement ones of those, but also both have loose limbs. One of them's clicker doesn't work. And as you can see, both of them are a little bit yellowed and also quite filthy. So let's get straight on with the video. Let's start by taking a closer look at both of the R2s that I have to work on. As you can see, both are a little bit on the yellowed side. I will de-yellow one of them. And I think the other one I'm going to leave just as is because I do like my toys a little bit wabby sabby and I'm not that fussed about uh, getting them as uh, pristine white as uh, some people are, but I will show you one of them uh, being de-yellowed. Uh, now, the heads on but these should click. I think if we turn one of them, that one you can hear the clicker is broken. If I turn the head on this one, you can see that one clicks quite nicely. So we need to fix the clicker on that one. Uh, the legs are incredibly loose on this one. They are held on with these little clips and I'm not quite sure why this isn't sort of holding in place, but on this one, both of the legs are really very loose. In fact, uh, this left leg here is so loose, uh, he barely stands up. This one's not so bad. These do sort of hold in place. So I think that one's okay. Uh, so, But uh, we'll work out a way that we can uh, tighten those legs. If I turn these round on the back, you can see that they have uh, the sort of secret compartment Compartment. There's a button you press on the front here and that opens up the secret compartment and inside that uh, there should be two sets of Death Star plans. You can see this uh, figure has uh, both of them in but if we open up the other one I'll just open up this. You can see that one is missing the Death Star plans. I do actually have one for this, but it's uh, sort of fairly battered. So I'm going to uh, make some of these from scratch. I think that's something a lot of people have asked me to do. You can also see that this one is missing the stickers that should be on the inside of R2D2. If we look at this, you can see there's actually some nice stickers on the back panel and also right on the inside panel. So I will uh, recreate those stickers as well so that you'll be able to download those and apply those to your uh, 12 inch uh, R2D2 if they are missing. They also need a little bit of repair work done to their domes. This one you can see has a few sort of scratches and marks. I actually really like the marking on this one. It looks like he's been shot. So I I think I might just leave this one as is. But this one here, you can see at some point, I think someone has previously tried to repair this. It's obviously a bit snapped out and they've looks like they filled it with milliput or something and then left a lot of sort of marks around it. So we need to re repair that, repair some damage to the chrome and then also repaint this uh, blue sort of that has been put over the top of the chrome. So I think that should be quite good fun as well. And obviously both of them are pretty filthy. This one here, I don't know what's on it, but you can see there's something all over the leg and on the head of the R2. Uh, so yeah, let's get these uh, taken apart and then we'll give them a good clean. Taking these apart shouldn't be too much work as you can see the legs do just pop off. So we just take those off there. And if we turn the figure around inside the secret compartment, there are four screws. Basically, you've just got to undo those four screws and the rest of the uh, R2 will come apart. So I've got a, a Phillips screwdriver here. Just unscrew these and then we can see what's going on on the inside. When it comes to washing these ones, uh, this one here obviously has a, a sticker sort of left in place. So I'm going to be quite careful when I clean this one. The other one, there are no stickers left on it, so I can submerge everything in uh, the uh, water. But on this one, there is a nice sticker just left on the inside there. So I will be particularly careful. Right, that's the four screws removed. And now we should be able to take the front and back sections of this off, like so. And then we can see what's inside it. There's something in there. Looks like a bit of sellotape or something. Maybe uh, someone's tried to hold that loose leg on in some way. So that's the front panel. There you can see that is the sort of secret release switch. So that goes in there. Then we have the back panel. And it looks like this door has been looks like they've melted the plastic to hold that in place. So I don't think we can remove that door without causing damage. I so will leave that door in place. So this piece I'm going to wash quite carefully, as I say, because that's got stickers on it. Then we have the upper section here and that's where the clicker is. Oh yes. So maybe we can unclip this head. Not quite sure. Let's open the other one and see if we see what that one looks like, because the clicker on the other one is broken. So it's a fairly simple mechanism. You can see there's just a piece of plastic here with a little arm that pokes up into the head and that clicks on parts of uh, yeah the inside of the dome of R2-D2. So I think, uh, yeah, let's open the other one and we'll see what the dome looks like on that one, because that one is broken and it might be that we can remove this. It does look like that's just pushed in place, but we'll see what the other one is like. 
Okay, so here is the head of the R2-D2, and it actually appears that this is a plastic screw. If I turn this, I can feel this unscrewing. I'm just using a pair of pliers to grip it. It feels like that is unscrewing to me. It's certainly coming out. Maybe it's not a screw. It's um, Oh no, it is. Look, there you go. It is a plastic screw. So uh, I can remove the head on the other one as well. So there we go. That's it all in pieces. So that is the head on its own. Here is the mechanism with the clicker. And you can see that is the piece that snaps off. There should be a bit poking up there. I think we can possibly make something out of a, an old plastic pot or something to put on there. Even if we don't attach it to that piece, we could attach it around here and we'll do something that does a clicking noise. So we'll have a go at that. Let's take the head off the other one as well and then we've got everything in all its separate pieces. Okay, so here is R2 disassembled and fully ready for cleaning. As you can see, I'll just show you the uh, little clicker bit so it's a bit easier for you to see what's going on. That is what the original clicker should look like with this uh, little tab on it and that's what uh, clicks and makes the noise and that's what's broken on there. As I say, I think I can uh, make something that will replace that. But first thing, let's give this a good clean. So basically I'm just going to use hot soapy water and a toothbrush and I'm going to get into all the nooks and crannies and clean out all the dirt and grime. You can see there's quite a lot of filth on the, some parts of this. Uh, the part with the stickers, I am going to be very careful with and not submerge. Everything else, I think there's no metal pieces or anything, so everything else can be submerged fully in the water, but this piece I will be extra careful with. So let's get this R2 cleaned up. After a good clean this is what I'm left with and everything is looking a whole lot better. Always cleaning toys makes a great deal of difference even if they're yellowed like this just getting the dirt and grime off them just makes them look that bit shinier and a bit sort of newer. So what I've done here is I've sort of taken the best parts of uh, the R2-D2s and put them to one side so that figure I'm just going to put back together and leave it as is. I'm not going to do any sort of paint touch-ups, I'm not going to do any de-yellowing. The one on the right this is the one that I'm going to sort of work up. This has the sort of the most issues and I think will be the most fun to fix up. So uh, I'm going to put this figure back together and this one we will continue working on. I'm going to do some de-yellowing on all of the white bits for this. So for that you need some hydrogen peroxide. I have some 40% hydrogen peroxide at the moment. I'm going to put all of these pieces into a clear plastic tub, fill it with hydrogen peroxide and put it out in the sun for a good few hours and that will de-yellow uh, the bulk of it. I'm not going to be putting the dome in because this doesn't need de-yellowing. I'm just going to put in the main white parts. Now it may be that some some of the blue paint on this gets uh, sort of uh, faded down because of the hydrogen peroxide. I will just have to wait and see what happens with that. It does sometimes uh, sort of damage the paint a bit or sort of makes it go a different colour. certainly does that with the red paints. With blues I've sort of had mixed sort of uh, luck with them. Sometimes it does nothing, other times it does a little bit. But as we're going to be repainting this anyway I'm not going to worry about that. So we'll get that de-yellowed and I'm going to put this figure back together. Now this figure has pretty loose legs as I showed at the start of this video. So if I try and put these legs on, this one doesn't even stay in place. It is so loose, there's hardly anything holding it on. The other leg is a little bit better. You can see that it's on, but it's sort of fairly floppy. Now to fix this, I think the easiest thing to do is actually just use PTFE tape. I don't want to modify uh, these pegs at all because uh, I just want to keep this one as all original. And PTFE tape is a great way of uh, sort of stiffening up limbs on all sorts of figures without sort of permanently changing the figure itself. You can buy it from most plumbers, merchants and DIY shops and it's really worth having some of it in stock. It's incredibly useful stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a long sort of piece of it just like that and I'm going to cut a length of that off and we'll wrap it around the joint and you'll see exactly what it does. So uh, I'm going to do the uh, the slightly loose leg first. So I'll just take some of that. You can easily cut it with a knife and we'll take the uh, little uh, peg that it's supposed to fit onto. I can just push this PTFE tape on 
and then start wrapping it around and it sort of sticks to itself. It's a very strange material but it's absolutely ideal for stiffening up limbs like this that have gone a bit loose. So we'll wrap that over all the way around and then you just sort of push it into place, push it into shape like that. We'll take the leg and we'll push that on and there you go. Nice stiff leg, it's not going to move and really does sort of make quite a big difference. So let's move on to this really loose leg. This one, as I say, barely holds on at all. So we need a little bit more of the PTFE tape for this one. So I've got so quite a long length here. Again, just cut it with a knife. And we'll start wrapping that around the joint. And then we'll fit that leg as well. Okay, that's good enough. So push that into place. We'll take the leg and we'll push that one on as well. This one I want to be really quite tight. So there we go. Yeah, lovely. Look at that. R2D2 now stands up and his legs are not going to fall off. It's that simple. Inside the back of R2D2 should be these two panels, which are the Death Star plans. These are removable little panels that are hidden away. So if we press that button on the front here, it opens this secret compartment in the back of R2 and these slot in place. But as with all sorts of tiny things like this, they get lost over the years. And so finding an R2D2 with both of these panels in place is actually quite a hard thing to do. So what we're going to do today is make a replacement panel. And it's actually uh, turned out to be easier than I thought it would. Sometimes with these things I sort of have an idea of what I'm going to do and it doesn't work. And I do little prototypes. So this was the very first prototype I made of making a panel. This was out of some one millimeter thick styrene sheet. I've cut a sort of panel that's about the right size and then I've uh, very carefully stuck a strip around the edge of it. But it's not quite right. It's a bit too thin and it's the plastic is a bit too weedy. So I then bought some thicker styrene sheet. You can get this in a different thicknesses. So this was one millimeter thick styrene. I've uh, very carefully measured this and it actually it works out it's just about 1.5 millimeters so I bought some 1.5 millimeter styrene sheet and from that I was able to make this which is my first sort of proper prototype and as you can see that's a pretty close match if I turn it around so you've got the stickers up the same way you can see that is a pretty close match and it really does do the job and it fits very nicely in the back of R2D2 like that so I'm going to show you how to make this out of some 1.5 millimeter styrene sheet and then use some replacement stickers that I will also be providing. So let's get making and we'll make some uh, replacement Death Star plans. The first part we need to cut is this inner panel. So I'm just going to take a couple of measurements of that. We can see that that is uh, 38 millimeters across by uh, 45 millimeters high. So I'm just going to cut a panel that is exactly that. And then once we've got that, we can start sort of rounding corners. So uh, 38 by 45, I'll mark it nice and neatly on this uh, bit of uh, 1.5 millimeter styrene and get that cut out. So I now have a panel that's the same size as the inner panel of this Death Star plan. But what we've got to do is round the corners. You can see this uh, original Death Star plan has these sort of nicely rounded corners. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a file and gently take off the corners. I don't want to take off too much, but I just want to give them that slight sort of rounded feel. So when we come to put the outer lip on, uh, we sort of continue the look of this. So you can see it really is only going to be about that much I'm going to round. It doesn't need to be a huge amount, but we need a little bit taken off the corner. So I'll just uh, remove all of the uh, corners of this piece and then we can start putting on the outer rim. For the outer edge of this uh, Death Star plans, we actually need to cut a strip of uh, styrene. It's going to be about uh, four millimetres wide. So I've already marked this up and I've already scored this. Uh, so I can just take a pair of pliers and I should be able to snap this off if I sort of work my way along the length of it. I'm doing one long piece. You could actually do a few little pieces because we're going to uh, sort of split this into uh, the four separate sides and attach it sort of one piece at a time. I just like to do this as uh, one long piece and then I know that everything should match up it should all be the same width the entire length. 
In an ideal world, what I would do is I would stick this on to one side and then sort of bend this styrene round. But uh, 1.5 millimeter thickness styrene does not bend. Even if you heat it up when you bend it, as soon as it gets to a 90 degree angle, it will just snap. So what we're gonna do is I'm just going to sort of cut pieces that will go along the length of uh, the sort of the main edges, but I'm gonna leave a little bit for the corners and then I'm going to add a tiny piece of styrene in, in each corner, sort of a little corner piece so done with a 40 five degree angles and then I can round this afterwards just with some filing. So let's get these main edges on then I'll show you uh, what I mean with the corner pieces and how we go about rounding it but the end result we will get something that looks exactly like this. It's just not as easy as just sticking this on and bending it which uh, that would have been a, a very easy way of doing it if it worked but unfortunately I know from experience it doesn't. I'm now going to attach these uh, sides just using some EMA plastic weld. I've shown this many times before in my recent videos, so if you want to see me uh, doing more sort of uh, construction using styrene and plastic weld, then do check out some of my other projects. Uh, but it's a very easy way of doing it, and it is a very quick way of making something. So uh, let's get this put together. Now all those sides are on, we can deal with the corners. And what I've done is I basically just cut another little piece of the styrene, the uh, four millimeter wide strip of styrene that I've cut. And you can see that that will slot in there. So I've done four of those. And you can, it's not a perfect fit, but actually by the time you put the plastic weld on, it'll soften enough that you can sort of push it into shape and make it actually fit. And then once that is all dry, we can sand it down. We'll get some very nice uh, rounded corners. So uh, let's fit all of these corners. We'll let everything dry and then we can get sanding. As you can see, after a little bit of sanding and shaping, I've got a really quite convincing shape now. It does uh, match these original plans very nicely. So the last thing to do is to make this little tab, the sort of the bit that you hold to pull them in and out of R2-D2. So what I've done is I've cut another piece of styrene off. Uh, this is six millimeters wide by 18 millimeters tall, and that is a good sort of basis for this little tab. You can see we need to sort of shape it a bit as well, because it's got a little curve to it. So before I stick it on, I'm going to uh, just taper these edges so that they have a similar shape to that, but I will do most of the sort of fine tuning once it's actually attached to the main part of the plan. So let's just trim these off so that we've got a slight angle, just using some plastic nippers as it's a really quick way of doing this. I'm just wanting the sort of basic shape 
So yeah, that looks right. It's got the right sort of uh, angle to it. So now I'm going to, again, plastic weld this onto the side. I've marked a midpoint there just with a pencil so I can uh, exactly line this up. Bit of plastic weld on there. We'll let that set. Then we'll do the final bit of shaping just using some needle files just to give that little bit of a curve. So let's get this attached. So again, we get some plastic weld. I'm just going to put a bit on the edge of this just to start getting it a little bit tacky. I can stick this on and line it up because you want this bit to be quite neat. It'll be obvious if it's in the wrong sort of position. It makes it look a little bit like a briefcase, I guess. It's that sort of thing. It's a little handle on one side. So I'll just put a bit more plastic weld on just to make sure that this is fully attached. We'll let that set and then we'll shape it. And here is the finished piece. As you can see, that is actually not looking too bad at all. I've got the shape, I would say sort of 90% there. There's a few sort of minor differences on the little angles that I've got there, but really for what I'm doing, I think that is gonna be good enough. And you can see we've got some nice rounded corners as well. So the last thing that we need is replacement stickers for this section and also for the ones inside R2D2. So what I've done is taken a fairly low res scan that I've been sent and I've uh, taken that into Photoshop. And I've also taken photographs of the original Death Star plans that I have. So I've got some nice versions of the uh, stickers just as images. I've also taken some images of uh, the inside of the R2-D2 that I have that does have the stickers remaining. And then using the scan and the photographs together, I've been able to work those up into a nice, relatively high res version of the stickers that you can now download from toyploy.com. And so I've printed those out onto glossy, sticky backed printer paper. And as you'll see, I've already stuck on some of them onto the uh, prototype version that I made, but this is the rest of that sheet. So you can see here uh, we have, these are the two other Death Star plans. So these are the ones that we're going to put on this one. And these are the stickers that go inside of R2-D2. Now I've tried to make them look as much like the vintage ones as possible. So they have the same sort of pattern on them, especially on these ones where I've had to upscale them and sort of do a lot of work on them. But I think the overall effect is very good. They do look a whole lot like these original stickers. If I open up this panel here, so you can see that is the original sticker. And that is uh, my replacement. As you can see, I think that's a pretty good match. I'm uh, very pleased with how those have come out. So let's get these ones cut out and we'll stick them onto the Death Star plan that I've just made. And here you go, these are the finished Death Star plans. So this is the one I've just made. That's an original one. This is the one I've made. And likewise, this is the original one here. And this is the one that I made earlier. And they both fit really quite nicely in the back of R2-D2. So let's bring in an original R2 and we can slot these in. And there you go. So both Death Star plans are now in the back of R2-T2 and they fit really quite nicely. These are by no means a perfect copy of the plans, but I think they do a really good job and certainly uh, make the figure look complete. And it really isn't that much effort to make them. All you need is a bit of 1.5 millimeter styrene, cut the uh, styrene to the measurements that I mentioned earlier in the video and then add a bit of trim around it and a little handle. And uh, yeah, there you go. You get some Death Star plans. The file for this, the uh, PDF file for the stickers will be available on toyploy.com and we're going to need these last couple of stickers for the rest of R2-D2 when we get him finished. But uh, for now, this part of the uh, restoration is done. Now we come on to R2-D2's dome. Now I've obviously got two domes here. This one I'm actually going to leave as is. You can see it's got some sort of uh, damage to the chrome, but I really like that. It really does sort of add a load of character to this R2-D2. It looks like he's got sort of blast damage. I think that's quite nice. So I'm going to leave that one as is. This one, which is a little bit sort of more scruffier around the edges, I'm just going to do some basic tidying up on because again, I like the fact that this looks quite rough. And even the chrome, you can see how shiny it is because you can see me reflecting 
reflected in it quite nicely. But there is some damage that we need to repair, and that is around the eye socket. I think someone has previously had a go at repairing this. It looks like there's a bit of a milliput or something put in there, but it's not finished. So there's actually a sort of little dip uh, sort of uh, removed from the front. So what I'm going to do is actually mix my own milliput up and sort of put some in there and reshape this so we do have a nice flat line. And then I want to just repair some of the sort of edge parts of the damage. So you can see there's a few scratches on the, around the eyepiece here. On this eyepiece as well there's a few scratches and a few little marks. I'm going to leave the general sort of grime on here because as I say I think that really looks nice and uh, if you've watched my channel before you'll know that I'm a sort of a wabby sabby toy collector so I like leaving some of the imperfections in. But I think if we repair that it'll look quite nice. So I've been working over the last couple of weeks trying to work out a way that I can actually do this and also get the paint to look right. So I'm going to be using some Molotow liquid chrome pens to touch up the chrome part of it. It, but I wanted to put something on top of that and you can see here these are my sort of test pieces and I've got something that's going to give quite a nice sort of result. So you can see here I put some Molotow pen on uh, this little piece of plastic. I did it really quite scruffly so it's not a very good finish but over the top of that I've painted something else and uh, you can see that we get quite a nice result. We get the uh, same sort of chrome finish shining through and I reckon if I put a couple of coats of that on I should be able to get a blue that is a close enough match. In fact this one here has slightly thicker application and that is looking better already. So first thing though let's uh, mix up some milliput and I'll just sort of sculpt that on quickly and uh, let that dry and then we can shape it and then we can start to sort of repairing the damage. Right, it's now a day later and you can see I've just sanded down the milliput there and I think that's looking better. There's certainly no longer a notch sort of been taken out of his little eyepiece there. So I think that will uh, do the job. Now I need to uh, touch up the chrome and for that I'm going to be using this uh, Molotow liquid chrome. I've shown this quite a few times on my channel. It's great stuff but you do have to leave it to dry for a good sort of couple of weeks to uh, let it sort of really set and really cure. If you don't let it dry every time you touch it it'll start to dull down and you'll soon lose the sort of chrome finish. Now on this as I said I'm not going to touch up everything I'm just going to uh, put the chrome on the sort of the worst areas where it's sort of really taken some knock so on these little eye pieces here and mainly around the eye and then I'm going to also paint some blue over the top of it. All of the other sort of minor blemishes I'm going to leave as is as I think those give this uh, quite a lot of character and really R2D2 is supposed to be quite a beaten up droid so I think it's going to make him look uh, yeah rather sort of fitting and sort of keeping in, in line with how he looks in the movies. So let's get the liquid chrome onto the bits that I've uh, sort of uh, repaired here and also some of these edge pieces that I can then uh, come back in a couple of weeks and paint it with the blue paint. With the Molotow Chrome always give it a really good shake beforehand so it's uh, well mixed and then as I say leave it for a couple of weeks if you possibly can. For the missing clicker in the head, I actually do have the uh, snapped off piece of the clicker. You can see that should be attached there. I don't think there's any way of uh, re-gluing this and having a, a sort of glue bond strong enough that that's not going to snap off again. So what we're going to do is uh, remake uh, the sort of this clicking piece. And I'm going to attach it to this original bar that's there. So what I need to do is find a piece of plastic that basically is a right angle. And I've been sort of going through my box of bits and just seeing what I've got, seeing what sort of looks the same sort of plastic, something that's got a bit of flex to it uh, and I've actually found these uh, little tea lights. I, I bought these for a project that I filmed right at the beginning of Toy Ploy making a little sort of diorama piece for uh, some Ewoks and they're great little things because you get a, a sort of little flickering light you can just about see it there uh, with a battery and a switch so I've bought quite a few of these for a project and I've got a couple left but it looks to me like if I take all of these pieces off 
we have this bit of plastic which is nice and flexible you can see it's got quite a good flex to it so I think it should make the right sort of pinging noise and it's about the right height if I just hold that up there you can see it's about the same height as that piece of plastic which uh, just if you need to uh, make your own piece that is about um, just slightly under 1.5 centimeters so about 14 millimeters I would say so I'm actually just going to cut this up and I'm going to cut a sort of right angled piece out of it that roughly lines up with the curve of this and then I'm going to uh, I think I might just sort of double sided tape it onto here and then wrap some uh, beading wire or something around just to hold it in place and I think that should make quite a good sort of little uh, pinger noise type thing uh, but really there's only one way to find out and that's to try it so let's get cutting Okay, so you can see what I've done there, cut out a piece of the plastic and then I've just stuck it on just with some double sided tape uh, just to see if that would work. I was sort of thinking it wouldn't, but it's actually stuck fairly firmly. I have uh, slightly altered the length of uh, this peg that points upwards. I've made it a little bit shorter. This one you can see just sits a little bit higher uh, and that means that when you turn R2's head it really bends the bit of plastic a very long way. So by trimming it down to be a little bit shorter, uh, it's only just the end part of this that catches on the inside of R2's head. It still makes a clicking noise, and it, but it doesn't put so much pressure on this plastic. So I'll just show you what this works like. If I put on R2's head and turn it, you can see he now makes a clicking noise. I don't think it's quite as loud as the original clicking noise, but it does work. Uh, so it's amazing what you can do just with a bit of uh, plastic and some sticky tape. I think that's going to work quite well. It may be I put a bit of uh, sort of beading wire just to wrap around the end just so that's held a little bit firmer. But on the whole, I think that actually works remarkably well. And you don't have to use a tea light. Basically, you're just looking for a piece of plastic that is already shaped as a right angle that has a bit of flex to it like this plastic does. And then something that you can sort of cut uh, and sort of modify to make a shape that's something like that. Uh, so yeah, really plastic box or something would have done the job. It just so happens that this is what I had in my spares pot and as you can see it has worked quite nicely. So uh, yeah we now have a clicking R2 head. Everything is now ready for the final stage of painting. All the pieces have come out of the yellowing and I've actually de yellowed pretty well. I think this leg is the worst piece that is still got a bit of yellowing on it but everything else as you can see has gone a nice sort of white colour so I'm very happy with those. Those bits really match. This leg is not actually off this figure it's one that I've uh, got recently so I think that's why that is de-yellowed slightly differently but the overall effect is pretty good so I'm happy with that and the uh, chrome paint has had time to dry on the uh, main dome part of RTD2 so you can see here that that's the uh, chrome that I painted on the Molotow chrome and that has dried nicely so we can now get on with painting. I've got quite a selection of paints here because there's a lot of different things to do. For the silver bits on the sort of the body and legs, I'm going to be using a silver sharpie. You can see here that it's sort of chipped on various sort of bits that stick out. And these silver sharpies really match very nicely to this sort of painted effect. So you can see I can just go around quickly and touch up these little pieces. And this just seems to be the best uh, sort of way of doing it. It's the same colour I use actually on uh, Masters of the Universe figures as well. It just seems to match very nicely. So I'm going to quickly go around with that. Then we can move on to the other blues. Now for R2's dome I have a new paint that I've not tried before and it's Tamiya X23 which is a clear blue. Uh, a friend of mine recommended me this for painting on top of the chrome. You can use it in an airbrush but you can also brush it on normally and that, that's what I'm going to be doing here. It seems to go on quite nicely and it's a fairly good match for the blue uh, and it is translucent so uh, if you want it a bit darker you just put on a few more coats. So on this uh, you can see that I uh, painted over the eye pieces and sort of I need to repair around the eyes. So if I just paint a bit on here you'll see how well it sort of matches in. 
it really is quite a, a sort of close match. So again, on this one, I'm just going to work my way around. It may be that I do a second coat on this just to get it the sort of the darker shade of blue, but I'm really quite happy with uh, the sort of color match so far. So let's get this all painted on. the blue on the legs and the body I'm actually sort of using a mixture of uh, three different shades of Vallejo model colour. I've got 70.962 which is a flat blue, I've got 70.841 which is Andrea blue and I've got 70.925 which is just blue. I've mixed those sort of in various amounts together because all of these pieces are slightly different shades of blue. There's no sort of particular perfect match uh, and I'm just going to sort of mix that and uh, go around the edges and sort of touch up all of these little scrapes. It's, uh, it's a shame that there isn't sort of one particular blue but it looks like this has been fairly thinly painted on so you just have to sort of uh, mix as you go. It's uh, going to be a little bit of a tricky job, but you can see that I've got quite a good match there. I was hoping uh, that I could use this stuff, but this is uh, really not the right kind of paint. It uh, only looks good on the chrome surface, so uh, we're back to Vallejo colours, but I reckon I can get something that works, so I'm just going to sort of work my way around, but you can clearly see the difference in tone. This side is really quite a dark blue. I'll turn this over, and it's got, got quite sort of light tones on this side just because of how it's been painted, so it is going to be a little bit of a sort of trial and error as I go around. All the paint has had time to dry now and I'm actually really pleased with the, how this dome has come out. That uh, new Tamiya paint, the X23, is a very good match and as you can see it allows the chrome to shine through so you get the sort of translucent blue effect and I think that's uh, really looking quite nice. As you can see I've actually already put this back on the little clicker but this is all uh, sort of back together because the next stage is to uh, put R2D2 all back together and it's really very simple. I sort of showed you at the start how to take him apart and basically there's only a few parts to him. So uh, this is the front section. You put the little uh, sort of uh, release mechanism part for the uh, secret compartment in the front there. It can only go round one way. Then you get the top section which I've already screwed R2-D2's head back on. That slots in there and then you drop the back of his uh, body back on like so and there are four screw holes inside so I'm just going to screw those up. I've already shown you how to tighten the legs so I'm going to be doing exactly the same on that and I have the stickers ready cut so I need to stick these in place. That one has to go inside the secret compartment and this one goes on the back of the door. So I'm just going to do that quickly and then we'll look at the finished figure. And here is the final finish R2. This is the one that I didn't really do anything to apart from give it a good clean. You can see he's still a bit sort of scruffy around the edges but I really do like the look of him. I do like the sort of the damage across his dome and the fact he's a bit yellow. He just looks a bit like he's been on Tatooine for too long. And then this is the one that we've done all the work on. So he has been uh, de-yellowed. We've repaired parts of his dome. We've uh, sort of repainted parts of his body. And of course we have made replacement Death Star plan. So these need to go in the back of him. So if I press that button there, you can see I've added the new stickers. So that's all done. And we can slot in the Death Star plan so that this R2 is ready to go and fight the Empire. And I think the end result is actually really quite nice. You can see there's still a little bit of uh, yellowing on this left leg. I uh, did put that in for another sort of good few hours and it really made no difference at all. So he's just a little bit two-tone. And as I mentioned earlier, this leg actually didn't come with this figure. It's a, another one that I've uh, sort of been uh, given recently. So uh, sometimes 
different bits of plastic from different factories sort of de-yellow in different ways. Uh, and as I've said in other videos, this de-yellowing process a lot of people don't like. And I have to say, I don't do it that often these days. Uh, it does tend to come back uh, over the next few years, this will start to yellow again and end up looking a bit more like this one. So it's not a permanent fix, but it is fun to do. And it means that you can have something that looks quite nice and displayable if you want to do it. Now, I do need to say a massive thank you to Joel, who actually very kindly sent me the uh, one-legged R2. I also need to say a big thank you to Brad who uh, supplied the uh, sticker scan that I've used to recreate the stickers for this. And I also do need to say a massive thank you to Scott who uh, happened to have a spare leg for R2 and he uh, very kindly uh, sent that to me. Uh, all of those people have received toy polloi badges and sort of other goodies as a thank you. So a uh, big thanks to them. Now there are a couple of other sort of areas on this figure that are sort of common areas to break which I haven't covered in this video. Uh, it's just that this video is getting incredibly long. So at some point I might come back to them. I know the wheel on the legs are often broken and sometimes uh, the hinge on the back panel is snapped as well. So at some point I may come back to this project in the future and do a few more sort of bits of fixes on this 12 inch R2D2. If you've enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.